Welcome to the channel and this is part 2 of the Megatron custom tutorial. In this video, we will do additional painting to the one in part 1 and you will create an effect that will make your Megatron look something like the box art. So let's go paint some plastic. So this is what we have painted in part 1 of the video. So the first thing that we will do is we will cut off this protruding part with a hobby knife. We will be airbrushing the whole wing silver so this create a gap that allows you to transform without much flaking. After you have removed it, remember to sand it down with some sandpaper to make it smooth again. Try to sand the whole surface of the wing so that the paint will stick more tightly. After you're done, we'll use masking tape and then we'll mask out both the wings on the legs. This is part of the preparation process for the airbrushing that we'll do next. And likewise, we'll do the masking for the cannon. So the masking should look something like this. And next, we'll take out the airbrush to prepare for painting. For good practice, we always wear protective gear like a face mask and of course, gloves. For the first step, we will prep the plastic surface with a black primer so that the next layer of paint will stick tightly to it. And of course, have a dummy toy in hand to test the thickness of the paint. Now let's start applying the black primer to Megatron. Make sure that you cover all the surface evenly with the primer. Remember to spray the sides. After the primer has fully dried, we'll apply a gloss black paint Ueno Black to the surface. You might be asking what is the purpose of this layer. This is actually to make the silver that we'll be painting next to look more metallic. For the silver color, we will be applying the E7 Bright Silver. And you can see now with the gloss pack that we did earlier, the metallic silver looks really really good. So we are done with the airbrushing and now we'll remove the masking tape to look at the finished painting. Looks okay so far. Now let's remove the masking tape from the cannon and take a look. And yes, it looks great. So after this, we'll do some post shading. We'll do the first post shading with clear brown. Reduce the range of your airbrush and lightly paint on the edges of the wings. This is supposed to be post shading so do not paint on the center of the object. We are only highlighting the edges to create an appearance of shading. And there you go, the first layer of clear brown is done. And now we add a second tone which is smoke grey. For the smoke grey, this will be even further out on the edges. So you can see here, on top of the silver, there's actually a clear brown on the outer edges and then further out we have the smoke grey. So some of you ask me how do I actually do the effect where it looks like it's burnt, so this is how I do it. And now we'll be painting the cannon. 
For the first step, spray paint one quarter of the barrel in clear brown. After this, spray the tip with gloss black. And you should get something like this. And we will be airbrushing the next layer with E7 Chameleon Purple Blue. The two-tone color will actually give you an effect that looks like the exhaust on the motorcycle that have been burnt out. And that looks pretty good. To finish the painting, we'll add the gloss black to the tip of the barrel. So with that, the airbrushing is all finished. And we'll protect the paint job with a layer of Mr. Super Smooth Clear Matte Coat. So let's take a quick look at the paint job. And you can see that with the airbrushing, we've created a lot of post shading and a lot of tones to make the Megatron look more realistic. And the barrel of the cannon looks really good with the two-tone effect. To finish up the basic color of the cannon, we'll be painting this grey portion with the black marker. And there we go, done. And after this, we'll use a sponge and work the rim fang steel into the non-barrel part of the cannon. And with this part of the painting done, the whole cannon is finished. Next, we'll be doing the same, sponging the color onto Megatron's body, but this time we'll do with less pressure. And this method that we are doing is called dry brushing, but instead of a brush, we are using a sponge. We only want some silver details on the raised edges, and by doing so, the small details come alive. Try to keep the pressure consistent and also remember to do the parts inside the joints. The lower part is done and now we are moving on to dry brush the upper part of the body. But actually I forgot to paint the two silver rings on the shoulder and now we are going to do that with a gunmetal marker. Sometimes when we are doing custom painting, we tend to forget small details like this, but it's alright because it's a painting process, we'll go back and forth once you get the hang of it. And we'll continue to sponge the upper part of the body. So one of the viewers actually reached out to me about the white lining on the Decepticon logo. So don't worry about that part because we're going to sponge it lightly um, only along the edges to break up the white line and it won't look so obvious. If you can get a borderless one, that would be great, but unfortunately, I can't find that in the shops in Singapore. Again, reminder to keep the pressure consistent and go through all the parts. One more pointer to note, because Megatron is a triple changer, so a lot of the plane and the tank parts are actually hidden. So remember to unfold those parts out and then dry brush them as well. So here you can see I actually unfolded the tank tracks or booster from the out mode and then we are dry brushing it. Likewise here we are unfolding the head of the plane so that we can get the same consistent dry brush effect throughout everything even when you transform. So this is how Megatron looks like after the dry brushing is done and if some details are lost in the process we'll use the marker to bring back those details again. For this part, we'll be doing staining by using the Tamiya Panel Line Accent Color. So if you did the step earlier with the clear matte coat, at this point, don't worry about making mistake because if you do, just use a little bit of the enamel thinner and then wipe the staining off. You can also use lighter fluid if you can't find that in your country. After the staining is done, we'll move on to the next step, and that is creating the chipping effect using the enamel paint hull red. This painting process is to create the effect of paint chipping or flaking off the corner and edges, revealing the rust below. That's why we're using the hull red. So use a fine tip brush and then start with a dot and slowly dot your way out.
After we finish with the chipping process, we'll move on to the second last step, which is creating the rust streaks. Here we'll be using an oil paint called Burn Umber. Now what you do is, you can use a toothpick or a fine tip brush, gently take out a small little bit of the oil paint and put a dot on the place where you want the streaks. And then we'll use a clean brush, here I'm using a flat tip one to pull the streaks out. You can see that I use very little strength and I gently pull the streaks. I don't want to overdo it because this will cause the oil paint to totally blend out. And that's how I actually do the streaks. So if you're curious about the chipping and the streaking effect, things that are related to rust, you can actually check out my other tutorial in the channel. Here's an additional pointer to where you can actually land the streaks. Look for the chipping that we've done in the earlier step and then you can actually put the oil dots there to pull the streaks down. Because if you look at things in nature, usually the paint flakes off and then the rain comes and that's where you get the rust streaks. And that is how we created the rust streaks on Megatron. So we're moving on to the last step which is creating the oil effect in the gears or in the corners and cracks of the robot. For this part of the tutorial, we'll be using Citadel's Agrax Earth Shade. Take a little bit of the shade and then apply it to the grooves and the details of the robot. Make sure to evenly spread it out. If you find that the shade is a little bit faint, you can actually wait for it to dry and then apply another layer. For this step, you have to be a little bit patient because it takes time to build up the effect. You can see in this shot that the Agrax Earth Shade blends really well into Megatron's details. And with this part done, we are finished with the custom. So we are going to protect it with a smooth clear matte coat and that's it. And there you go, the finished custom. So now let's take a look at it with the box art. You can see here without any cinematic effects, the texture is actually very close to the box art. And with the layers of painting that we've done, you can see the overall paint job is actually very natural and very very detailed. Let's do a comparison side by side to take a look at what is the difference between the one that we've painted in part 1 of the video and this part 2 of the video. Part 2 is actually a more advanced painting process where we need to use an airbrush but you can see with all the painting and effects that we've done it created a lot of depth in the paint job. And because this is partial painting where we still retain some of the bare plastic, we can still transform and play around with it with very minimal flicking. And with that we've come to the end of the video, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. So remember to subscribe and like and let me know what else you want to see in the comments and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!